Jennifer Coolidge went from being a slacker waitress to an iconic actress, crossing paths with Sandra Bullock, Jerry Seinfeld, and thanks to one infamous role, a lot of random hookups. This is everything you need to know about the actress's unique ascent to stardom. Jennifer Coolidge may be known as a comedic icon now, but she never used to think of herself as a funny person. She revealed in an interview with Female Magazine, "...no one in my family thought I was funny. You know, they thought I was weird." In her family, she said, her brother was always the comedian, even if she could break out some pretty good impressions at the dinner table. When she went to the American Academy of Dramatic Arts in Manhattan, Coolidge set out to become a serious actor, like Meryl Streep, whom she worshipped. She explained, "...I wanted to be a straightforward actress. I was very serious about that, and it went a different route." But Coolidge had a hard time trying to get people to take her seriously, especially when she was told that she wasn't attractive enough for roles. Brutally evaluating her appearance, one casting agent reportedly told her, according to Vulture, "...in your headshot, you look just like a young Candace Bergen. You look nothing like this. I only cast good-looking people on my soaps." Before they both found fame, Jennifer Coolidge worked alongside Sandra Bullock at a restaurant in New York called Canistel's. Sandra Bullock was the hostess, mm -hmm. and I was the cocktail waitress. However, their attitude toward work was very different. While Bullock had her act together, Coolidge has admitted that her own performance was less than professional. I had like five shifts and I would show up for three of them. During her clubbing years, Coolidge once even pretended that she had a cigarette put out in her eye to get off work, going as far as getting an eye patch and gauze roll to corroborate her story. But apparently, none of her antics got her fired thanks to a very lenient boss. Bullock ended up getting a lot of Coolidge's shifts since she was out partying. Jennifer Coolidge discovered her potential as a comedic character actor thanks to The Groundlings, a Los Angeles improv troupe that has produced some of the biggest names in Hollywood. She later told Female Magazine, "...I thank God for The Groundlings." She explained how a friend urged her to drop out of the dramatic acting class she was taking and drove her to try out for the famous comedy training ground. She recalled, "...he said, this is where you should be. I needed some direction, and he made me do this audition." As a member of The Groundlings, Coolidge learned how to do comedic improv alongside future stars like Lisa Kudrow, Kathy Griffin, Will Farrell, Chris Kattan, Sherry O'Terry, Anna Gasteyer, and Will Forte. She said in an interview with the Holland Sentinel, "...I happened to be there at a really great time." As well as learning new skills and discovering her own talent, Coolidge also found that the group gave her the opportunity to perform in front of important people. Recalling her first time on the small screen, she explained to Female Magazine, "...Mark Hirschfeld that cast Seinfeld was in the audience one night. He cast me on Seinfeld and then all these cool things happened because of The Groundlings. The Groundlings sort of changed my life." After years without any acting success, Jennifer Coolidge landed her first big break in 1993 at the age of 32. She was cast as a masseuse who dated Jerry Seinfeld on the hit sitcom Seinfeld. And as she recalled the GQ, it came as quite a shock. Coolidge confessed, "...I didn't really have any jobs before that. I only had lies on my resume." She wasn't even sure what to wear for the audition, explaining that at the time, she didn't have any outfits that she considered flattering. Apparently, a couple of store employees put together an outfit for her. Julia Louis-Dreyfus also helped her out at the table read, boosting her confidence by telling her that she'd done a great job. Coolidge later said, "...I knew I sucked, but she was still really cool about it." But as she told Vulture, "...this triumphant career development was still a bittersweet moment. Her first on-air role came right as her mother was in the final stages of pancreatic cancer." She recalled, "...my mother's last words to me were like, I can't believe it." But she was thrilled because she didn't think anything was going to happen. According to Jennifer Coolidge, her breakout role in American Pie as Stifler's mom led to a lot of attention from younger men. And I'm single, I'm yeah, single, right. so I'm yeah. really using it to my advantage. <laughs> The actor insisted that she wasn't annoyed by people who associated her with her seductive character from the hit 1999 film, since it led to her getting a shocking amount of action in her personal life. There's always someone who's seen that movie lately, so then you sort of get a whole new group of young guys. Coolidge told Variety, "...there were so many benefits to doing that movie. There would be like 200 people that I would never have slept with." As she admitted to Conan O'Brien, she got an honorary MILF status from the character, despite not having any children in real life. She said, "...when you do a movie, you get credit for things. You know, the movie says you're something." Coolidge also said with her characteristic self-deprecating humor, "...I was very lucky, and I'm glad there weren't more girls auditioning for that part. I never would have gotten it." Mom? Some of Jennifer Coolidge's most beloved roles have come from Christopher Guest films like Best in Show and A Mighty Wind. As the filmmaker told Variety, he first discovered the actor when she was in The Groundlings, saying, "...when I met her, I knew there was something going on that was special, and I was right, fortunately." And likewise, I'm sure. 
He singled out her ability to improvise and make audiences laugh just by standing there, adding, No one else acts the way she acts. I don't mean acting as an actor. I mean behaves the way she behaves. For her part, Coolidge returned the compliment in 2021, telling The Guardian that guest films were her favorite projects to work on. She said, It doesn't get any better. He comes out with things that are so funny but with such dry, serious delivery. I can't keep it together. She also praised frequent guest collaborators like Eugene Levy and Catherine O'Hara, adding that they were stunningly down-to-earth despite their talent. Coolidge insisted, Becoming part of that group was life-changing for me. Those movies, wow, you always want to get that phone call. Since her years as a struggling actor, Jennifer Coolidge has never taken any role for granted. But her long string of guest appearances in sitcoms and supporting roles in comedies has arguably led to the actor being pigeonholed over the years. She reflected in an interview with The Hollywood Reporter, "...the same script does tend to show up at my house over and over. 90% of the scripts I get are about women with lots of plastic surgery married to rich men or women with weight problems being ridiculed." Coolidge added that she was never offered lead roles. In reference to her iconic Legally Blonde role, she noted that the these days, the gig would be more along the lines of Reese Witherspoon's dumpy mother. The star explained, "...you get the older version of women that you've played before." Insisting that Coolidge's range was often overlooked, friend and collaborator Mike White told Vulture, "...I know that sometimes she gets frustrated that she's always having humped the furniture parts. She can nail that kind of broad comedy, so of course that's what people want her to do. People love her, but she's put in a box." Jennifer Coolidge is more than happy with her status as a queer icon, as she told The Advocate. The actor has supported many LGBTQ charities over the years, like the Elton John AIDS Foundation. She also noted that she always just naturally found herself drawn to the queer community, finding common ground through her taste and sense of humor. She explained, "...since I was young, I have had many gay friends early in my life, so my love for the community started at a very young age, and I've been in Hollywood a long time, so I've had the opportunity to work with so many queer actors. They give me credit, but I give it right back to them for always being there for me." In an interview with Fulcher, the star joked that many of her characters could be interpreted as drag queens and insisted that if reincarnation existed, she would choose to come back as a gay man. She also said that her friendships with gay men were important to her, explaining, "...gay men don't make you pay for having a strong point of view, and I really like that because hetero men don't like that." For years, Jennifer Coolidge has lived in a reportedly haunted mansion in New Orleans. Although she claims that she's never seen a ghost, she told E! Insider, "...I've heard people say, oh, there was an old sea captain sitting at the piano, a little girl bouncing a ball down the stairs." Her seemingly spooky mansion has also appeared in movies and TV. For example, Sofia Coppola took advantage of its old-fashioned charms and shot the interior scenes for her 2017 film The Beguiled in Coolidge's home. In a 2022 interview about working with Ryan Murphy on The Watcher, Coolidge revealed that she had been hoping for a call since the producer borrowed her house for an episode of American Horror Story a decade prior. The actor told Pride that she had been longing to do something dark and creepy with him for years, saying, "...I thought for sure he would call me and say, "'Well, we're using your house. I'm gonna put you in a scene." I knew that Jessica Lange was up on the second floor one time, and I went, "'Oh my god, I want to be in this so bad.'" Although her house got a starring role and she didn't, there was a happy conclusion to the story, since 10 years later, Later, she starred in Murphy's The Watcher. Jennifer Coolidge has had a triumphant career resurgence thanks to her starring role in both seasons of The White Lotus. Her work on the HBO dramedy series won her an Emmy, a Critics' Choice Award, and a Golden Globe in the space of just a few months. But she almost refused to take on the role that her friend, series creator Mike White, wrote especially for her. Speaking about the creation of her character, White told Vulture, "...I would love to be able to write something that allows her to show the person that I know." White was so driven to work with Coolidge on the project that he said he told HBO he wouldn't do the show without her. The writer explained that he wanted her to have a role that would demonstrate her talent, saying, "...the same way people feel about her in Legally Blonde is how I feel about her in life. I want to see her win." "...show him, just show him the core of the onion." Coolidge was less certain about the show, however. According to People, she nearly turned the whole opportunity down because she was self-conscious about not being in, quote, fighting shape after eating a lot of vegan pizza during the COVID-19 pandemic. Luckily, a friend gave her some sound advice before Coolidge could fake a foot injury to escape filming. Her friend said, "...this is the worst thing you could do to yourself. Just go. Just go do it." And then, as Coolidge put it, "...for once in my life, I listened." 